Welcome back, everybody. This is our Algebra 2 Linear Functions Lesson 2, Average Rate of Change Home Review, Part 1. Again, if you have not seen uh, watch lesson number one, get a chance to go over that. Also, some of the other topics we covered, such as function foundations, uh, make sure you review those as well, too. Kind of get a better understanding of our Algebra 2 topic. So, average rate of change. Now, We'll see this quite a bit, but you have kind of know this in another form. So in general, the average rate of change is a change in the value of a quantity divided by the elapsed time, usually based upon time here. Um, for a function, this is a change in y value divided by change in x value for two distinct points on the graph. Another form is a, is a slope between any two data points of a graph of a function. Now, so yeah, average rate of change, when you hear this, really you're finding a slope but you need two points on a function to be able to compare them. So they, again, the function doesn't be linear. If it's linear, it's, 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 you know, then the slope's given in the function itself. But a lot of times our functions will not be linear. But so we, we do want to take a look at the average rate of change. And we will see the average rate of change may differ between any two given points uh, on, on the particular function, basically because again, based on the shape of the graph. So now we have a better idea what this is. Let's go on to our first question. For the function g of x, given in the table below, calculate the average rate of change for each of the following intervals. Okay, so, so we'll take a look here, and we notice in this case when g, is, well, g of x is, we try to find g of x when x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 1. So our coordinates will be, in this case, negative 3, comma 8, and the other coordinate will be negative 1, comma negative 2. So the change in this case we'll be looking at is going to be neg 2 minus 8 over neg 1 minus neg 3. So that's going to be in this case, we're going to get a negative 6, a positive 6 actually, positive 6, because it changes to, uh, actually no, that's, sorry, not, not negative 6, sorry about that. So plus 9 minus is negative 10 over plus plus, this is going to be over 2. So our average rate of change, so our average rate of change will be in this case negative five for the first problem. Okay, so for the second interval between negative one and six, we're looking at the coordinates. In this case, x is negative one, which means our y value is negative two or g of x, is g, g of negative 1 is negative, is negative 2. And then when our x equals 6, g of 6 is going to be 12. So again, we set this up as a slope. 12 minus negative 2 over 6 minus negative 1. And so 12 minus negative 2, change, change, we get 12 plus 2, or 14, over 6, change, change, plus 1 is 7. So our we get our... Simplified answer is 2. Our average rate of change in this interval will be positive 2. So we see in this case that um, that this that we're looking at, we find different average rate of change or different slopes between two, two particular points. And now for the third one. Here we have the x value is neg 3. Our matching y value is going to be 8. Our x value is 9. Or the matching g of x values would be 5. So we just have our slope 5 minus 8 over 9 minus neg 3. And so we get negative 3 over positive 12. Our average rate of change when we simplify this is going to be negative 1 over 4. Okay. Now, I didn't mention this before, um, but we would do want to kind of um, discuss this, that the average rate change, our slope, for, our slope in this case, our slope formula, remember from previous lessons, our slope formula is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, in case you were unsure about how we found our values here. So find our coordinates, find our change in y's, over change in x's, okay? Now the question is, explain how you can tell the, from the answers a through c, this, this is a, not a table that represents a linear function. Well, we would say the following, okay? So again, we want to make sure we write this out. g of x, so g of x, oops, g of x is not a linear function 
because the average rates of change between two data values, two points in this case, are not equal. Okay? For a function to be linear, the average rate of change, rate of change must be a constant. See, that's the whole thing, right? Because the average rate of change, the av average rate of change is equal to slope, okay? And so if the slopes are not equal to each other, then it's not going to be a linear function, okay? That's sort of how we approach this. All right, hope this is helpful. Now, move on to question two. Consider the simple quadratic function f of x equals x squared. Calculate the average rate of change of this function over the following intervals. So what we need to do is we kind of need to figure out what, once you plug in a zero, well, what would the matching f of zero be? Well, if we have zero, we would have, in this case, zero squared, which is just going to be a zero. And if we had x equal two, we have two squared, which is four. All right, so our average rate of change would be, in this case, four minus zero over two minus zero, which is four over two or two. So our average rate of change between and these two particular points is gonna be two. Here, when x is negative one, when negative one times negative one is positive one, so that's f of negative one. And we have 6 for x, x is 6, f of 6, or x, 6 squared is going to be 36. So now our average rate of change would be 36 minus 1 over 6 minus negative 1, or 35 over 7. And we'll leave it that way. Our average rate of change is going to be, well, I mean, we could, because it's over, some might consider in this case, our average rate of change could be over time, um, but this f, in this case, we don't have that time as interval, uh, we use a unit rate. So we could express it as uh, 7 goes into 35, well, hey, it is an even number, it's 5. So average rate of change would be 5. Okay, and then finally, for the third one, C, when x equals 4, we have a y value, or f for 4, a value of 16, because 4 times 4 is 16. And then when x is 6, we know it's 36 here. So 36 minus 16 over 6 minus 4, well, that's equal to 20 over 2. So our average rate of change, well, 20 over 2, that's equal to 10. Okay, very much similar to what we did before. The only difference between question one and question two is that, is that we had to calculate our matching y values in this case, or outputs for compared to inputs. Clearly, the average rate of change is getting larger as x gets larger. So we see in this case, um, we move from zero to two, negative one to six, four to six. So even between negative one to six and four to six, that average rate of change uh, is going to be getting larger and larger. So as we get noticed between um, uh, in the smaller intervals, how is reflected in the graph f of x shown the right below? So it's so shown the right. Well, okay, so how do we see this? Okay, so we can say the slope of the graph as we move further to the right, is getting steeper, which, oops, let me just, uh, which, oh, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen, it's just, uh, I have to control this here, which means the value of the average rate of change is getting larger and larger. Okay. Now, 
if we were to take a look in this case between, and we can kind of estimate here, all right? So for example, we can say that this is a, this point here is gonna be when X equals neg, well, uh, we see here from, um, this is four to six. So the, this, this, uh, the, the slope of this line here is gonna be much steeper than from zero to two. So for example, we had, zero to two, zero to two, this slope will be only this steep. So we see here as we move further to the right, the slope between the points is gonna get steeper and steeper, giving us a higher value, okay? All right, and let's take a look at question number three. Which has a greater average rate of change over the interval from negative two to four? the function g of x, which is 16x minus three, or the function f of x equals two x squared, provide justification for your answer. So what we wanna do in this case for, we wanna find in this case, so negative two comma g of negative two. Well, that's the same as neg two. Well, neg two times 16 is, well, let's see now, 16 times neg two, minus three, that's equal to neg 32 minus, oops, minus three, or neg 35. Okay, and then we're gonna find four and of g of four, which now g of four is 16 times four minus three, which is 64 minus three, which is 61. So the coordinate we're using is four comma 61. And so we wanna find this average rate of change. We're gonna use 61 minus neg 35 over four minus neg two. That's gonna give us a, a 96, I think, over six. Okay, uh, nine, yeah, 96. Because, so 96 over six, yeah, that's gonna be, I think divides evenly. I think it's 16, right? 60 plus 30, yes. 16, so that's the average rate of change for g of x. Now for f of x, for f of x, well, we wanna find neg two comma f of two, all right? And so f of two is gonna be in this case, two times two squared, which is eight. So we're gonna get the coordinate of two comma eight. And then we wanna find the coordinate for four, so four comma f of four, well, f of four is two times four squared. Now four squared is gonna be 16, so two times 16 is 32. So our second coordinate is gonna be four comma 32. All right, well, let's see now. So we do 32 minus eight over four minus two. Now 32 minus eight, that should equal to 24. And 24 over two is equal to 12. So which one has a greater average rate of change? I would say in this case, this one. So we would make the statement that the average rate of change, average rate of change for g of x, oops, g of x for the, uh, is greater than, the average rate of change for f of x along the interval. Now, it could be different in this case, but we'll see in this case that because of that particular interval, let me make some entire page, okay? In the entire interval, we'll see that the average rate of change of 16 is greater than 12. We change the interval, we might get something different. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Uh, please give this video a like if you found it helpful. Uh, subscribe to the channel and leave comments below in the comment section. We're looking forward to hearing from you, hearing from you, Lord. Uh, right. So hopefully you guys see you guys soon. Take care and be safe.